This video is gonna curse because the topic makes me angry. There it is. There's your wording. Get out, kids. Ow! Toby, including you, that means you. Get out. Did you know in the early 2000s, the popular Disney Channel movie and moneymaker machine Lilo and Stitch got a series? Just like a handful of other popular Disney movies. And if you're not so popular, you get three episodes and you're repackaged as a sequel. Fucking genius! Or for some reason, is it on Disney Plus yet? The hell? Of all these series, though, only two have crossover episodes. One being the Aladdin series and the Hercules series mashed together. This is technically the farthest the Aladdin canon goes, if we're calling it canon, taking place after the King of Thieves movie because of this line. I'm married. So that's it. There's your trivia you learned from the video on the Kim Possible Lot channel. Honestly, House of Mouse kind of fucks up everything if we're talking about pre- or post-story characters. Is Ariel a mermaid or not? Make up your goddamn mind. You thought no one would notice. You fool! But I did. Disney in general has made a lot of sus decisions when it comes to popular franchises. As most people know. Calm down, jerk off! I didn't touch your daughter! She was coming on to me! At least it's kind of better now, or at least more controlled. Say what you want about Disney+, Plus, but at least it's trying to cater to what people want, not just throwing everything out there. Tarzan 2, is it a 2 or a prequel? Who knows, but they made it. Insert a bunch of Lulu and Stitch crossovers that we didn't need. I'm not sure why these were made or why Disney picked Lilo and Stitch in general as a concept for this. My assumption is based on synergy or something. Combining all these things that shouldn't be combined. But from an industry standpoint, if person A likes, for instance, Kim Possible, but not watching Lilo and Stitch, this might be a way for person A to be introduced to Lilo and Stitch. I think this is kind of silly to be honest. Lilo and Stitch as a franchise is incredibly popular. I mean, who could resist those honest crossover ads? This is actually a more successful attempt at the concept of synergy that we just were talking about. But since it leans on more parody and self-aware style, it ends up being more successful than any of these crossover things. We get crossovers with the Proud Family, an American Dragon Jake Long, and Recess of all things. At least aliens kind of work in the Kim Possible universe, but even from the get-go, introducing aliens and a show like Recess doesn't really make any thematic sense, because Recess is kind of just a parody of school time fun, so... Uh, you thought no one would notice. YOU FOOL! And then we have this one, the Kim Possible one. As far as the other crossovers that I'm not going to dissect in this video because I just, I just can't, yo. They're as bad as what you would think they are. Character from outside the show has a conflict that is reflective of a very base-like understanding of their source material. There's some kind of confusion because, oh, the characters are in Hawaii. We gotta go do Hawaii shit. Ooh, she dances. Deep think, much plot. People like to think that because these exist, in moments like these, If you haven't heard, women are free to do for themselves. Haven't you ever heard of Oprah, Janet Jackson, J-Lo, Kim Possible? Disney Channel Animated Universe is an established canon thing, and that doesn't make any sense. I'll give you the live action shows because, ew, but the crossovers are a little inconsistent and mostly bad, I feel, to the canon. Keep in mind, I know thing bad doesn't mean it's not canon, I have heard of Avengers 2 we would like to forget, but since this is both a crossover that didn't have the original writing team involved, I feel like it's fair game. After all, Stitch has come to save the day when Kim Possible's whole world is being invaded by aliens in the finale, or mentioned in So the Drama at all, so that also doesn't make any sense of this established thing, so it's not canon guys, I'm sorry. The Aladdin Hercules crossover is a little bit more meeker since both are well-established Disney franchises based on films, so there is not a consistent writer or writing staff involved, but the Disney main canon crosses over a lot. Then we get into third-party interactions like if House of Mouse is canon, or the action of the parks, or descendants to the parent franchises, and I just... We don't have enough time for today. Back to the Kim Possible crossover. You thought no one would notice these inconsistencies, Disney, but YOU FOOL! The Kim Possible crossover is about the same level as bad. For those who are new to Kim Possible, I guess what rock have you been living under these days? The basic dynamic is that Kim is the straight man, Ron is the idealist, 
hate plot about spy stuff and villains, Draken and she go dicker with each other, and it's all a happy, dysfunctional family. One of the problems from the get-go is there's so many characters for a whole 20 minutes, which is no one's fault. You got Lilo and Stitch and Kim and Ron and Draken and Shigo and Hamsterville Guy and Gantu and Jumbo and Pleakley and Nala. Nani. That's, that's, that's too many characters from 20 minutes, guys. <laughs> the main conflict center around Lilo wanting to be involved in the action, which in a normal environment would make sense to not let a child get involved. Lilo is panically six. So it's not too far of a leap to let her not go on Save the World Adventures. She's six, guys. I think Lilo and Stitch's expectations for children are a little unrealistic in general. As far as the plot lines for the antagonist, Lilo and Stitch villain Hamsterveel, German name thing, has hired Draken and Shigo to capture Stitch and to clone him. This is an example of the biggest problem the special has. The episode is set up so the heroes and villains can cross and have conflict. But on the Kim Possible side, everything from the dialogue makes this seem like whoever wrote this only watched a couple of episodes before writing this script. Even the models of the characters are off, and what I call the dreaded dead eye models of season one. Oh! Watch Kim Possible season one and try not to notice it now. The character models get more appealing after the first season of Kim Possible and are closer to the promotional art used to promote the series, but the fact that the animation team didn't even have the correct materials for characters doesn't make any sense when this came out in 2005, the same time after So the Drama. Did Disney employees just not talk to each other? Plot-wise, the first red flags are Draken and Shigo working for something for money, when typically Shigo steals money for whatever is needed. Draken has a temporary partner in Sick Day, but it's pretty conditional only because Shigo is sick. This whole premise is kind of weird, especially for Draken to go all the way to Hawaii to do it, decently far from his usual Caribbean lair. Another thing that comes up is when Pleakley is trying to seek out help from LOL Frog Fancy. Yep, that's a real impossible thing. That's the thing you choose to get right, okay, is how accessible Kim is. Hawaii seems like a long trip for a source that might not be vetted. Something that I think is an interesting touch is Kim's specific number of saving the world saving times, which is never really discussed in the actual show, since she has been implied to be saving the world actively since before the canon of the show starts. This might be before the Kim Possible show starts, but Draken and Shigo were already introduced, which happened during the show. Okay. So we're definitely putting this guy in the mad scientist category. So this also doesn't make any sense. Don't put exact numbers on things, guys, or you'll trip up and I'll be able to tell. You fool! What do you know? It's like they didn't watch the fucking show. The comedy of the special is also weird, too. Lilo and Kim find one of Draken's gloves as the clue, and it is the weirdest joke I have ever seen. It's important when writing anything that you think about how interactions and jokes work with all the characters involved and in the context of the story. That's why Proud Family is kind of weird sometimes. Why would a school play have security guards? I know it's funny when they throw Oscar out, but like, why were they there in the first place? Why would Draken actively add this and put it into his glove? An easy fix to this is to write the message as his mom. Call it Drewby's favorite gloves, he's single ladies, A or something along those lines. The flying French roll joke works a lot better, though. I'm gonna start calling Draken's hover car a flying French roll. We should add that Ron doesn't really have anything to do in this episode, so his subplot is arguing with Pleakley and Jumba the whole time if Rufus is actually one of Jumba's experiments, which could have been solved with a simple DNA test. But we need a B-plot for something, so Ron is not charming and is just extra annoying. To be fair, the experiment does look a lot like Rufus, but still, logic, what's that? So Kim finds out Draken's location by magic. I guess Draken is microchipped too or something. Draken's gotta be there somewhere. Only one way to find out. An easy fix to this would be, oh, I scanned for the hover car's Wi-Fi signal or something, but no. This is also a lazy thing that is lazy in the special for the sake of being convenient. You thought no one would notice. You fool! Draken and Shigo's dialogue is also stupid. Shigo commenting about an obvious thing that is obvious in an evil layer and not about the nuance of the situation. These bars are charged with over 300,000 volts of electricity. Yeah, about that. Do you have any idea what that's gonna do to your electric bill? 
jump change compared to the fortunes we will reap once my plan comes to fruition. It's all going on credit cards anyway. Again, an easy fix is the line like, oh, it's a dog. Is your next evil plan going to start a dog show? The dialogue after is a little bit better, but it just echoes old school Kim Possible episodes. Okay, let's get to the Josh Mankey line. Lilo, I've jumped out of burning planes, out skied avalanches, and looked Josh Mankey straight in the eye. I think I can handle a little rushing water. As far as production time, this aired in August of 2005. Again, four months after So the Drama came out. I know television episodes take about a year to make, but someone could have communicated. Again, do they talk at the DisneyChannel.com? It has to be at least like after season 2's episode of The Truth Hurts, tone-wise, but a little weird since we haven't even seen Josh Mankey in like a year or two real time. His last appearance was in the Moodulator episode. I think this is the last time he's even ever mentioned, honestly. He's not in season 4 at all, like, even as a background character, which is oddly kind of weird. I guess he moved after senior year or something. I mean, it's not too big of a deal, but the timing is established and it makes me cringe on the inside. My favorite part of this is everyone's best idea is to send Lilo, the child, to save Kim. I get this is trying to complete Lilo's episode arc, but from a logical point, she's six! She's six! She's six! She's six! With barely any effort, everything explodes. And I gotta love this top quality animation here. Animation is my passion. Draken and Hansel's reveal have a stupid fight just to end the episode because Draken is just sarcastic. How is it going? Yeah, well, it'll explode me, but fine. That's it. That was the end. And Kim makes a fashion comment, I think, because baseline character understanding. What's that? Is everyone okay? That depends. Are you wearing a wig? Why, yes. Then I guess I'm okay. The Lilo and Stitch characters seem fine from what I can tell, but Kim Possible characters work the best when they are in their post-season 1 characterizations. And this makes me feel like whoever wrote this only watched a handful of episodes, like I said. I mean, I get it, we all have lives and things to do, but it's frustrating when this at least could have been fun, like the Seed of the Universe and Uncle Grandpa thing that happened, because that sure did happen. For fans like us, it's frustrating because, man, you have all these IPs to play with and the plot is if a six-year-old can swim. I could write a better Kim Possible episode than this. Can we pretend that airplanes and the night sky are like shooting stars? It's great, isn't it? We also, unfortunately, live in a time where animation is constantly challenged as a medium. Look no further than the Academy Awards, where Beauty and the Beast was basically shamed for having a Best Picture nomination. <laughs> It baffles me that people with film knowledge don't know how much more complicated animation production can be, and how it takes respectable people in the live-action film industry to remain boomers about it. But unfortunately, when we do the bare minimum or just have confusing concepts in general, a subpar result is the outcome. We need more media like the Lego Movie, honestly, which subverts expectations. So chop this Lilo and Stitch crossover in a pile. And no, it's not canon because the timeline is hella messy and doesn't make any sense with established Kim Possible things that happen later on in the series. But you know, if you're gonna use popular IP, leave the story first or else just don't do it. Have the Disney sequels taught us nothing. So have you seen the Kim Possible Lilo and Stitch crossover? Have you seen any of the other crossovers? Let me know in the comments or whatever. Crossovers you think would actually make a good story? Let me know and I will read all of them. Most of them, probably. Yeah, okay. And that's all, folks, except it's not time for the ending gag. I had a minion. A treacherous parrot. Not a pet. A minion. What an a Pesky problem fixers! Got a problem that's pesky? We'll fix her for just one lousy quarter. <laughs> What do you mean you're broke? Uh, hey, oh. if you're looking for charity, call Kim and Cosby. Uh, They're cheap. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please remember to leave a comment and share this with a friend or two or five. Click here to subscribe, we really appreciate it. Click here to check out the main collaborator for this video. Click here to check out our video playlist for this video, where you might find similar videos that hopefully you like and enjoy. There's also a credit scroll here, where you can check out all the other awesome contributors. All their info is in the description. That's all I gotta say, KP away!